So I'm here uh, talking to Tim Johnson, a new Bellator heavyweight, uh, making the switch from the UFC. I wanted to ask you the jump to Bellator. Obviously, you haven't fought yet, but what has the transition been like dealing with them as a whole? Um, so far, it's been, uh, been pretty, uh, pretty smooth. They, uh, you know, contacts with everybody once I uh, signed with them um, was uh, with everybody, uh, got in contact with everybody, uh, make smooth transition over, you know, uh, got introduced to everyone behind the scenes. Uh, so that was kind of a um, nice thing to do. And uh, so far, everyone I've been talking to seems uh, pretty nice, very, very uh, one-on-one oriented. Is that kind of the big difference between the promotions, the UFC, maybe a little more business-like, uh, and then Bellator a little more personal, so to say? Yeah, I would, I'd say so, uh, to a sense. I got, uh, uh, with uh, the people behind the scenes at the UFC, I got along with uh, a lot of them very well. Uh, I still have, you know, their phone numbers and stuff, any problems I ever had with them. But at the same time, you get random phone calls and it seemed like, you were just, you know, uh, you know, numbers on a sheet of paper, not an actual person. Now, when you were making the decision to switch, and there's a couple of questions I have about it before we get into the uh, the new fight announcement and everything, but uh, when you were making a decision, had you spoken to anyone who was already fighting for Bellator? Yeah, I was in uh, pretty close contact with uh, Roy Nelson. Uh, I go out, I go out there and train with him quite a bit, and um, you know, we we talk quite a bit. And he, uh, from what he was telling me, and his wife was telling me, like uh, the switch over, um, it's gonna be, it's not a bad organization to fight for. So um, having them tell me that, which they're pretty, you know, if you're seeing one who knows Roy, and you're seeing a Roy interview, you know, he's not gonna sugarcoat anything. So um, him saying that kind of led me in that direction too. Now you basically fought out your contract, and I think the quote. Uh, I read uh, online was that the interest from the UFC was mild in re-signing you, which seems crazy given you're a heavyweight who had a winning record for them. Did they actually tender an offer? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I just talked to my I, I was just talking to my agent, and you know, you know he said there wasn't a lot of interest in the UFC, but you know I'm getting interest elsewhere, and um, told me the Bellator. Uh, give me the Bellator numbers and uh, that the UFC wouldn't be coming close to that. So, um, yeah, that made my switch over. And I had, I had some, some grievances and grinds about, uh, some gripes about UFC, though, too. So uh, maybe it was best that we split our ways at, the time, at this time being. Uh, if I can ask, what were the grievances? Um, every, every, fight I, every fight that I won, you know, I walked my way up that top 15, and I hovered around there. I think I went from like 15 to 14 to 12 to 13, you know, for quite a few fights. And after like, you know, the wins I'd have, I'd want to fight someone a little bit higher instead of, you know, fighting debuts all the time. So I'd offer, I'd, I'd call and be like, hey, I want to fight, you know, our, um, Andre Arlovsky or um, Stefan Struve or Alexi Olenek or Derek Lewis. I asked Derek Lewis like three or four times and it never went anywhere. They'd just come back with, Oh, we have another debut for you to fight. Gotcha. Um, and, and obviously, I mean, if you want to move up the ladder, you got to aim higher up on the ladder, so that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's kind of, you know, that was just like with this, uh, when Bellator got back to me with uh, Czech Congo, I was, I was like, yeah, I'll take that finally. I've been waiting three years to fight a, fight a guy with a name. Now, and he does have a name. I'm going to ask you one more on, on, on the switch, and then we're going to get to Congo. Um, was it the numbers from Bellator that sealed the deal or the sponsorship opportunities? Like, what was the final factor? I think, I think a little bit of both. Um, just, yeah, I, I've, I've been following Bellator also for my career, as long as, you know, fans follow UFC or Bellator. There's not a lot that, that kind of crisscross um, for Bellator, what they kind of do, the platform they use, and and I gotta understand uh, what direction they're trying to take the company. All right, now as you mentioned, Chet Congo for your debut, that's a big one. Um, so that's a fight that they offered you then? Yes, actually, I was offered um, in May. I was offered a fight against uh, Molowski. I can't even pronounce his name. I don't know that uh, you know Russian. What he fights with Fedor, um, but he fought. I was supposed to fight. 
fight him in July in uh, Oklahoma, but about five, six weeks before the fight, I uh, suffered an uh, injury and uh, had to pull out of it because I, um, I learned my lesson fighting injured um, from the Junior Albini fight. So I wasn't going to do that again. Gotcha. Now, Congo, uh, obviously October, so it's a ways away, but he is on the best run of his career. Uh, I think he's at five or six straight wins. Uh, is there anything in particular you're doing to prepare for him? No, not yet. Uh, it's still, still pretty early in camp. Um, I haven't even really looked at any, any tape on him just other than watching his fights in the past from my memory bank. But other than that, we haven't really got into any any game plan for him yet. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully I can get the get the take down or something, get back get back to my old uh, wrestling roots a little bit. Now, this is a fight, and I don't know if uh, anyone said anything about this, but it feels like it could be an alternate for the Grand Prix. Um, has that been discussed at all? Not, not to my knowledge, anyways. Uh, I know there was talk uh, when they were putting the Grand Prix together that Congo was actually going to be one of the one of the fighters in the tournament. I don't know what happened there, but I would I would like to think that you know the winner between me or him could be possibly an alternate. I, I think from the talk, actually, because I have I do a fair number of Bellator events, and uh, I know I've, everyone's pestered Scott Coker about it. Uh, I think the thing with Congo was that Rampage was in the tournament, and they trained together and wouldn't fight each other. So I believe that's why Congo actually was left out. Now that Rampage is out, though, I mean, it would seem ideal if the winner of your fight uh, does go in as the alternate. Okay, yeah, that makes, that makes sense then. And the timing works too, because Fedor and Chael are uh, on the top of that card on uh, Bellator 208. Did you ever think you'd be sharing a card with Fedor someday? <laughs> nope, I most definitely did not. <laughs> that was uh, that was a nice surprise. That was also another uh, another perk when they offered it to me. I looked it up and I knew who the headliners were, and I'm like, "Yep, absolutely, I'm fight on the fight card." <laughs> now I obviously know who you're picking in your fight, but who do you see winning that one between Fedor and Chael? Now, what makes you say that? I, it's uh, watching the, uh, the Fedor's last three fights. I mean, I guess I could say the same thing about Chael too, but he just doesn't seem doesn't seem like he he's almost a shell of himself right now. Still super dangerous, still you know the greatest of all time, but um, I just don't know how much he has left. All right, yeah, and I think definitely. I mean, Mir, yeah, he won Mir, but he definitely had some struggles before that. Um, the heavyweight division as a whole, though, it's probably, I want to say, the strangest in MMA because um, anyone can knock out anyone. A lot of the top guys are pushing 40, be it the UFC or Bellator, and in that sense, you're almost like a spring chicken. Um, do you kind of feel that you've got lots of time to develop, and kind of what's your take on Bellator's heavyweight division? Yeah, I've been, been kind of thinking that to myself for the last couple of years, like, you know, you got, you got kids that are, I'm, that's how old I think I am, I call them kids, mid -20, in their mid-20s. Um, they're, uh, they're coming up and coming, they're up and coming too, but heavyweight, you know, in the past and historically has been uh, later, you develop later on in, in your career. Uh, the last thing you go is, is your power, and it's just, you, I mean, I guess this is all, my always theory was, the reason why older guys last longer is with heavyweights is they, you finally develop your old man muscle <laughs> that you can't work out in the gym. And, you know, obviously experience too, because when you're going that long, you you get the uh, rounds in. Yep, that's, uh, that's always a good way to go. Hopefully I get some more experience here. I still, still don't have too much. I mean, I finally worked it up a little bit, but I think I only got uh, 16 fights in my career so far. Now, on that note, uh, what's the plan? Because I believe this is a four-fight deal. Uh, how often do you want to get in the cage, uh, hopefully for Bellator? I was, uh, before the injury happened, I was planning on trying to get them all done in a year. and uh, But now, that's, who knows what will happen. But hopefully, uh, if the fight goes my way here in October, maybe fight in January, then maybe fight in you know, uh, April again, and then see where I'm at on that last fight. 
All right, and then obviously, uh, if all goes well, uh, what what's your goal? I mean, I, I would assume it's uh, a path to the title. Yeah, that's kind of that's my game plan here. Uh, you know, just like you said, everything's. Uh, I don't take anything for granted, and I don't ever look ahead of the, the person in front of me. But um, if we get going, and I get everything lines up perfectly for me, um, I hope to you know beat Congo. And then kind of work my way up the ladder of the other heavyweights who got defeated within the tournament. And by fight, you know, three or four, uh, be right there for a contest or a contention. Well, I want to say if you beat Congo, and let's let's say nobody gets hurt and. The tournament plays out, and whoever fights for the title in December, I mean, you're already, if you beat Congo, potentially in line for a title shot or a title eliminator, because I would probably tap Congo, as it stands today, as a number one contender with the streak that he's on. Yeah, I know, he's definitely on the best streak of his, uh, his career. So, I mean, it definitely puts me, if nothing else, it definitely puts me on the map a little bit. Absolutely. Well, super looking forward to it. Uh, obviously, Bellator 208 uh, going down October 8th, or sorry, October 13th at the uh, NASA Coliseum in uh, New York out on Long Island. Uh, can't wait, man. That's going to be a good one. Yep, thank you. <laughs> no problem, man. Hey, I want to really thank you for taking the time today, and I uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Yep, sounds good. All right, take care. Have a good one. Yep, 